Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a new Chromebook Plus from Lenovo. This is their Flex 5i, and this is the first Chromebook Plus from Lenovo. And if you're curious about what Chromebook Plus is, I did a whole video on it that you can check out to get more information. But basically, it's a hardware specification that sets a minimum floor for some of the more high-performing Chromebooks. So a Chromebook Plus must have a 12th generation i3 processor or better, or a Ryzen 7000 series Ryzen 3 based processor or better. Additionally, all Chromebook Pluses need at least eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, a full HD 1080p IPS display, at least 10 hours of battery, and a 1080p webcam. And this device exceeds some of those specifications. And we're going to get into it in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $499. This is equipped with an i3-1315U processor from Intel. It has eight gigabytes of RAM that is not upgradable. It is soldered on, along with 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. The display is very nice on it, actually, for a lower cost laptop. A 14 inch IPS display running at 1920 by 1200. That is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It supports 45% of the NTSC color space, though. So that means it's not so great for color accuracy if you were planning to do some photo or video editing on this. But even with the plus designation, I don't think people are buying Chromebooks for those types of creative endeavors. It is a mixture of metal and plastic, but it feels pretty nicely constructed. This is a two-in-one, so you can turn it into a tablet. And I'll show you some of the pen features in a little bit. And as such, you get a touch display here in addition to the keyboard and trackpad. So it's a nice all-in-one, very similar to many of the other Lenovo two-in-ones that we've seen in the past. It is, though, a bit on the heavy side, 3.57 pounds or 1.62 kilograms. So there are definitely lighter units out there than this one but it is, I think, pretty nicely equipped for the price point, and often you give up something, and in this case, you're giving up a little bit of portability for that low price tag. It's compatible with USI pens, and I'll show you uh, one of those pens here in action in a minute, and it also has Wi-Fi 6E on board. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, it gets about what the Chromebook Plus specification calls for, around 10 hours, give or take, and a lot of that's going to depend on what you're doing with it, so if you're sticking to the Chrome browser here and keeping the display brightness down, you will be in good shape for pretty much a work day. But if you're keeping the display on its brightest setting and playing games and doing other things that are taxing the processor a bit more, you'll certainly eat into that battery life more significantly. Now it has a 1080p webcam as per the Chromebook Plus specifications. It looks pretty good as you can see here. They also implemented some new features in Chromebook Plus that allow you to add things like blurring and noise reduction for the microphone at the operating system level. So whenever you have your camera up on your Chromebook, you'll see some controls at the bottom here that let you add the blur and go through some of the noise reduction features that are now part of the operating system. It's not a separate driver that you need to futz around with. And I covered that in my review of Chromebook Plus. Additionally, there is a shutter here at the top of the display to cover up the webcam when it's not in use. Now the keyboard and trackpad are quite nice on this. You've got nice, large, well-spaced keys. And of course, this is the standard Chrome OS layout that you'll see on other devices. And the keyboard on this is backlit, which is pretty nice to see on a low-cost device like this one. The trackpad is also very nice here. And Lenovo has been delivering some really nice keyboards and trackpads over the years, and this one is no exception. The speakers are pretty good on it as well. You don't get a huge range of sound, but it's not all that tinny. And you've got decent stereo separation with your speakers located on the left and right hand side of the unit. As for ports, let me just unplug it here. You've got a couple worth mentioning. You have two full service USB-C 3.2 ports. There's one on each side. These can provide power along with data and video output, so you do have some flexibility with those full service USB ports. These are not, though, Thunderbolt, nor are they USB 4 ports. 
Here you have a USB-A port. This runs at a five gigabit per second max data rate, whereas the USB-C ports run at 10. You have a headphone microphone jack here, along with a micro SD card slot to augment its onboard storage. And on the other side, you have a volume control, your power button, and that other USB-C port, along with a Kensington lock to lock it down on a desk. Now this does have a cooling fan, and you're going to hear that fan come on whenever you go beyond the basic tasks. I define basic as watching a video or doing some web browsing. Beyond that, you will hear the fan kick on, and it will come on louder depending on what you are doing. You do need to keep the bottom of the laptop here clear for the air intake and the back clear for where it exhausts. The fan is a bit on the noisy side, especially when it gets going. I did not find it all that distracting for doing basic work because it really doesn't come on until it needs to, but just be aware that you will hear the fan going when you place the computer under load. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. So let's kick things off with some web browsing. We'll visit the nasa.gov homepage here and see how it is all coming together. And as you can see, things spring to life here very quickly. I can use the touch screen to navigate. If I was in tablet mode, I could of course put this into portrait mode and read off of it like that and all in a very nice browsing experience as expected. And it also looks like NASA just redid their entire website here too. So it's running a bit quicker, but all in, I think a, a very nice web browsing experience as should be expected on this generation of Intel hardware. Now video playback on this is also very good as it should be on current generation Intel hardware. We're running a 1080p 60 video from my YouTube channel. We had one drop frame when it started, but after that, it's been able to keep up just fine. So I don't think you're gonna have any issues with Twitch or YouTube or any of the other major video providers with one caveat, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, what you will notice though, because we have a 16 by 10 display, you do get some letterboxing on the top and bottom because this is a 16 by nine video. And most of the videos you'll encounter online are in this aspect ratio. But other than that, video playback does great on here and it's a good choice for people that stream a lot of video. Now here's the caveat. If we jump into my web browser, you'll see that I'm currently on Netflix. And in the browser address window, I now have a button here that says open in app. And when you punch on that button, it will load up the Google Play Store and encourage you to download the Android version of Netflix to your Chromebook, which is fine. However, the video playback quality on the app is lower than what you'll get out of the browser. So if we jump over to the Netflix app, I've got my specifications up here. And if my camera can stay in focus, you can see that right now it is at a wide vine level three for its DRM specification. And the maximum playback resolution is SD. SD is basically DVD quality, not Blu-ray quality, standard definition quality. So that means when you play back Netflix on the app, it looks worse than it does when you're playing it back through the browser. So for the best image quality, especially on a nice 1080p display like this one, you want to run it on the browser, which can deliver to you the 1080p quality video that you can't get in the app. This has been one of my biggest gripes about Chrome OS for a long time. It has yet to be rectified, and I'm hoping at some point it does get fixed, especially now that we've got Chromebook Plus with higher end units here with nice high resolution displays not getting the full image quality. This is a software repairable issue. It's not anything to do with the hardware. So at some point this complaint will be over with. But for now, if you are watching Netflix or Disney or any of the other streaming services, watch it in the browser for the best image quality. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 268 which lines up pretty well with other comparable computers running with similar hardware. Now, as I mentioned, it does have the Google Play Store where you can find a lot of Android applications that you can run on your Chromebook. One I want to demo for you right now is called LumaFusion, which is a video editing application. And this has been enhanced for Chromebook Plus level hardware. So you've got the ability now to edit 4K video on your Chromebook. And as you saw, it boots up here pretty quickly. I did find that the 60 frames per second 4K video I'm running with here gets a little flaky when you're scrubbing around the timeline here, as you can see, but you could put together a pretty basic video edit here on your Chromebook now, and it actually performs pretty well, all things considered. 
I still, though, would recommend a Mac or a Windows computer for more heavy-duty editing with a little bit more hardware here. But this is a good example of, I think, where Chrome OS is going, where you can start doing some of this higher-end kind of activity. And there's a lot of different ways that developers can approach these applications. This one happens to be an Android app, but as you'll see in a few minutes, you can also run Linux applications on the Chromebook natively, too. But it's nice to see things moving in this direction. And what was really cool is that it automatically found the video that I had stored on this external hardware. And I flipped it around into tablet mode here because this Chromebook also supports USI compatible pens. This is a cheap one I bought on Amazon, and it seems to be working here just fine. As the pen gets closer to the screen, it ignores my wrist input, so I'm able to draw here. And as you can see, there is not much latency here either. You can buy pens directly from Lenovo, but again, it looks like any USI compatible pen will work here. The screen actually feels pretty nice for writing. There's some good resistance to it, so it doesn't feel too slippery. And altogether, a pretty good pen experience here. And there are some pen controls now built into Chrome OS. You can actually write in just about any text field as well and have your handwriting recognized. Now you can also uh, put it into split screen when you are in this mode here. So things look a little different when you flip the Chromebook around. And this has been something that they've been doing now for a while here. So right now we're in tablet mode and split screen. But if I flip it back into laptop mode here, we'll get overlapping windows that I can move around again. So a uh, pretty nice consideration of the tablet form factor when you have things flipped around and then it goes back into laptop mode when you go back into the more standard configuration. And another popular mode is display mode here where you flip the keyboard onto the bottom and this will also perform uh, like the tablet mode does. Now, Chromebooks have recently gained the ability to download and run Steam games, but you have to do it within reason. And this particular Chromebook is not very well suited for Steam gaming, given the fact that it's only an i3 and it only has eight gigabytes of RAM. But some lower end games do actually perform pretty well. So why don't we load up Dave the Diver here and see how it performs. Let's give it a second here for everything to load up and we'll take a look. All right, so here we are running Dave the Diver and with this i3 machine at eight gigs of RAM, we're only getting about 30 or so frames per second with some lag hits here and there as things are loading in. So as I mentioned, this is definitely not the ideal target for Steam gaming by any means, but if you were looking at one of the Ryzen-based devices or uh, even one of these with 16 gigabytes of RAM, I think you'll see a little bit more performance when it comes to Steam gaming. I did try to run No Man's Sky and a few other more demanding titles, but those really could not play very well at all here. But this does give you an idea as to where I think Google wants to go with this Chromebook Plus specification. And of course, game streaming works exceptionally well on these Chromebooks, including this one. I'm running Starfield right now with the Microsoft Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription that I have here. And as you can see, everything is streaming uh, quite nicely here over my Wi-Fi 6 network. Other services like GeForce Now have also seen some optimizations specifically for the Chromebook Plus hardware, especially on some of the devices that have higher refresh rate displays. This one is locked in at 60 hertz for its refresh rate, but it performs great for game streaming, and I think this is probably the best target for higher-end gaming, at least at this hardware level. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Gaming Benchmark test, we got a score of 7,013 on the regular version of that test and 1,119 on the extreme version. So certainly there are better performing devices out there with better processors that will get you a better score, but that's where this one happens to land. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is its Linux compatibility. Like most Chromebooks now, you can install Linux applications. You can do command line apps here, like my favorite text editor, Nano, but you can also run graphical applications like LibreOffice here that give you a full-on Office suite that runs locally on the Chromebook. So all of the software and data is stored here, so you can use this just like any normal Office application without needing the internet. And of course, whatever other open source applications you can think of, you can install on here too. So altogether, I found this to be a pretty good value for the price point. Although it doesn't run Steam games all that well, it does everything else at a very nice level of performance. It's got a very nice large display here that is quite bright for a low cost unit. Nice keyboard that's backlit 
And one of the things that you'll be seeing added onto this machine over the next couple of months are additional Chromebook Plus features. The big one being some generative AI stuff that will let you put text into anything you want. It's kind of an operating system level AI text generation tool. And they'll be, of course, adding additional features beyond that to the Chromebook Plus operating system over time. This one is guaranteed to receive updates until June of 2032. Google recently changed their policy on updates to be 10 years from the time in which the platform is developed. This one is nine years from the time that I'm recording this in 2023. And I suspect that the hardware that's driving this was developed a little bit earlier than its release date. And that's the important thing to know about the Chromebook update schedule. If you bought this used five years after it came out, you've got five years of support left on it. So just be aware of that. At the time of shipping, it is June 2032 for updates. After that, the Chromebook will still work, but it won't get any further updates for security or features. But nine years, I think, is a good long time to get out of a lower cost device like this one. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.